Hello everyone, this is Jin Huo and welcome to One Community's tutorial uh, on SketchUp for beginners. Um, and we're going to be talking about how to import objects into SketchUp and place it where you want it. So what I'm going to be using for this particular tutorial is uh, the, the SketchUp plans page that is on One Community's website. And you can find that at onecommunityglobal.org forward slash SketchUp dash plants. And when you're on this page, uh, you can actually just go there and um, you'll see what it's all about, how we're creating it and how we're how we're using it um, and why this page is created and all that that will be included here. Uh, but on this page, we're going to have the SketchUp links where you can actually download um, each one of these these plants. And the for this particular example, I'm going to be using one community. Actually, this is a, a real life example because this is exactly what we're going to be doing is to import these plants into this place. Um, so this tutorial is designed for the beginners. So I'm going to be going through in detail um, step by step on how to basically do everything. <laughs> so first thing I'm going to do. Um, this is actually to show you how to download this and import it and then how to move it around, rotate it, how to scale it. Um, and I'll show you a bunch of different examples on that um, so that you will feel more comfortable uh, in this process. Now the way that our website is set up is that we are actually including every single plant that we are using and you can find it on this page by using the find function. And by default, that is con uh, Control F on a PC and Command F on a Mac. And you just type down either the common name um, or the Latin name for each one of these plants, and you'll be able to locate it, download the Sketcher file, and and also include it into uh, your own projects. So let's get started. And the first thing is downloading the uh, Sketcher plants. So here we go. Click on that. Hit download model and make sure you click on the SketchUp version if there is more than one. So click download. For right now, um, this is asking you where do you want it to be. So for now, I'm just going to choose the desktop. Okay, as you can see here, I already have it saved, but I'm just going to overwrite it. Okay, so save it somewhere. Now you're going to go there. So mine is on the desktop. And what you want to do is open that file up. Press OK if anything pops up. Now, before I get into anything, um, I'm going to show you a couple of keyboard shortcuts and also introduce you to the toolbar on the left uh, very briefly. So what's going to help you the most here is if you've already gone through some basic training. Um, that's going to help make this process a whole lot easier but I'm still going to be covering a lot of the basics so what first thing you want to do is you want to click on to this plant now usually it's already grouped okay um, there are two different ways to group things one is called a group and one is called a component very briefly the difference between the two is that a group it allows you to just select the entire group you can actually put more things inside that group um, and then you can select everything by just clicking on it. Uh, another, another way um, is the component function, which is very similar to a group, except the only difference is components are meant to have duplicates of. So let's say um, this particular plant, you're going to have 10 of them. Well, it's better to use them as components as opposed to groups, because if you use them as components, then um, it will reduce a lot of the file size. If you save something as a group, then it will count it as separate objects, which do take up more space. Now, I'm not going to show you exactly how to create all of that here, but I just want you to be aware um, and that and how that how important that really is once you start having a pretty big file. Now, on the right side here, you will see entity info right here. This is actually the window, and underneath you will see component one and model. So that. If you don't see this window, you can just go up to the top where it says window, go down and make sure that the entity info section or this uh, part is checked. 
um, so once it is once you do have it shown you will see that on the right and this will show you that whether or not it's a component so usually um, they are in components um, if not then you can just search on Google on how to make something a component on SketchUp and you can find a tutorial on that so once you have this selected and you see that it's it is a indeed in a component you want to copy it you can copy it using the default uh, system keyboard shortcuts such as Control C on a PC or Command C on the Mac um, or you can just go to edit on top and click on copy so but for this one I'm just gonna do that I'm gonna click on copy and then you want to go back to the other window which is where you want to paste it so right now um, I'm just gonna choose a random spot of where I want to place this plant just to uh, just for this tutorial um, so I'm just gonna choose a place really quick it's part it's definitely not the right place uh, but I just want to show it to you so let's say I want to put um, the plant let's see here and by the way I'm gonna show you how to navigate and stuff just in a little bit but I just want to place this plant somewhere first so um, since I'm not the plant expert I'm just gonna choose I'm just going to choose this little corner back here. Okay. So here's where I actually click paste. And paste, I can do that by um, pressing the default controls, which is Control V as in Victor on a PC or Command V on a Mac. And then you actually see the plant right here. Okay. Another way you can do that to paste, let me just go back really quick, is to go to edit and paste. So edit, paste, and then here you are, okay? And then I can just, you know, click it. Just click one time where I want it, uh, well, roughly around where I want it, and then you will see a blue uh, rectangle surrounding that particular object, okay? Now, here are some other th uh, neat little things that will make your life a lot easier, such as how to navigate through the different views. There are different ways to do that. Um, on the left side, this is actually the toolbar, uh, and if you just put your mouse over different ones, you'll see this one is, a, is the uh, select tool, and right next to it, you'll see space. That means the space bar. So that's actually the keyboard shortcut for the select tool, right? That's if you want to. So I'm going to click on that. That's if you want to select different objects, right? As you see right now, if I click on this, it's selecting this entire group of objects, which is happens to be half of, you know, the domes here and then if you click on on this other place it selects a group of objects right so that's just a selection tool so I want to select this chestnut tree well I'm just clicking on it and I'm selecting on it um, to zoom in and out uh, uh, it will be easier if you have a mouse with a scroll bar in the middle um, when you just scroll it you'll be able to you know just zoom in and zoom out uh, if you're using a laptop um, on like a PC or something uh, there's different zoom, you know, sections on your trackpad. I don't really know, so you, you have to figure that out. On the Mac, you just use the two finger and then you push up. That zooms in. Two finger push uh, or pull down um, on the trackpad and that zooms out. So these are going to be really uh, important things. So if you want to rotate the view around, they actually call this the orbit tool. On the left side, you'll see the green and red arrow which is the orbit tool uh, the keyboard shortcut is O so when you click on that all you gotta do is click and drag you can actually rotate around it okay and as you can see for this particular model um, this plant you can rotate and uh, the plant actually rotates with you so you can actually see it which is kinda cool and you can go up and down side to side and wherever you rotate that's the point at which the uh, that's the point at which the view actually rotates from okay so if you combine the two you can zoom in rotate zoom out rotate okay you, this is uh, how you can rotate around it now there's actually another way to rotate or another way to navigate through this file and that is using the hand tool there's two ways to access the hand tool I'll show you the way that I generally use it and also another way I'm using the toolbar so on the left side you see the hand which is the pan tool 
right that's the pan around so if I click on that you know it just moves it you know left right up and down whereas the orbit tool actually rotates around where your cursor was so if you want to combine the two which is really simple oh and, and very cool you can get really cool effects now the downside with clicking each one of these tools is that you have to keep changing tools to go back and forth between these navigation tools so what SketchUp actually has done is while you're in the orbit tool um, just showing an example here hang on one second if you can use the orbit tool and go around it all you gotta do is hold the shift button see shift and it will become a hand if you look at the cursor right now it's the orbit hit shift and it'll be the hand and you don't have to change tools in order to use both tools so this is something that I would highly recommend that you use a lot the zoom in zoom out um, hit O the orbit tool to rotate around and then you can do a shortcut to the pan tool by just holding shift and then clicking and dragging that's another way now if you are using a laptop um, it's actually a little bit difficult to just keep clicking and dragging so if you're on a Mac however uh, you actually have it lucky because by simply changing a simple um, setting you can make your clicking and dragging very easy and let me show you that really quick you can go to system preferences go to um, trackpad and there's this thing called the three finger drag and if you look at the example here you see that you put three fingers down and then you just move and what that is equivalent to is clicking and dragging you can also use this for highlighting text which makes your life a whole lot easier so I would highly recommend that um, if you're on a PC definitely use a mouse and if you're on a Mac you can use a mouse if you have a scrolly bar or just use the trackpad and change the setting to three finger drag um, you don't have to it's just uh, makes your life a whole lot easier now let's get back to the plant so now that we know how to rotate we know how to zoom in and out we know how to pan around we basically know how to change the view so that we can look at what we're working with the next part of the tutorial is to learn how to move this tree around, um, how to scale it, and how to rotate it. Um, in this particular example, we don't need to rotate this particular um, item because if you move, the tree actually changes its view so that you can see it um, spot on. Um, but some, some, diff some objects, you can't really do that and I just want to show you how to do that really quick. Alright, so let's say that you have an object that doesn't always face the camera and you need to rotate it. Well, the way you would do that is you'll go back to the file uh, which you got the actual um, the model. You're going to select the whole thing and then you're going to create component, make it into a component, press create and then as you see this one it doesn't rotate right so let's just copy this one I'm just gonna show you. this is just as an example just in case your model doesn't rotate okay so I'm gonna put that one to the right side so I'm just all I did was hit paste uh, which is command V or control V and I'm gonna place it here and let's say this is not the way that I want it to be rotated I actually want it to face a different way well that's when you use the rotate tool which I'm gonna hit Q on the keyboard I'm gonna select the uh, the point at which I want to rotate it so I can just click here um, click the first point and then I'm gonna move it so if I if I click the point and then I move it see that I'm actually moving it so let's say I want it to be like that well then that's how I would want to rotate it now I'm gonna show you different ways to rotate it so let's say um, once the object is selected by using the select tool and you see the blue box around it I can actually just click out here and then rotate it and notice that it rotates around the first point okay so let's say I'm gonna click here see it just rotates around the first point that I choose right that's actually pretty important now let's say you are working on something you start moving it 
but you want it to go back to its original position okay you can just hit the escape tool in the middle of a in the middle of a move say I hit the escape and it goes back to normal or let's say you rotate it a certain way and then you made a mistake to undo that you just go to edit do the hit undo and then that's gonna bring it back and the keyboard shortcut for that is Control Z on the PC and Command Z on the Mac. All right, so for this, for the remainder of this tutorial, I'm just going to use the original document or the original model, and I'm going to delete the second one I just created. All right, so how do you move your object? So as you notice, this one, see, I'm zooming in right now. I'm using the Orbit tool to kind of see is my plant. Um, leveled and as you can see here this particular tree is floating in space well you don't want that in this example we don't want that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this down and there's actually a couple ways to do that for this uh, particular um, for this particular function I'm gonna use the move tool and you can find that by looking at uh, the toolbar to the left that's the plus sign looking right with the arrows pointing up left right and down the keyboard shortcut is the M tool so I'm just hit M now to use the move tool you have to make sure that your object is selected first so this one it is selected okay and then you want to uh, select what you want to move so for this one I want the trunk of the tree to attach to the floor so I'm going to zoom in close so I can get uh, the cursor right at the bottom of the tree trunk. I'm going to click and then I'm going to start dragging around. So as you notice, once I click on it, I can make it go anywhere I want. Now, what you also notice is that there are uh, different colors. Like for instance, if I go here, this is actually, it says on blue axis, right? There's a blue dotted line going up and down. That is actually locking the tree to a the blue axis so right now it's going along the vertical axis there's also the green axis okay green axis is right there and you can actually follow along that axis and then if you move around some more you'll find that there's also a red axis which is right here okay now if you want to go up and down and you want to lock on the axis all you have to do is hold the shift button and once I do, notice that the dotted blue line turns bold, right? Now I'm just bringing it up and down. See, now it's actually locking to that axis. So what I want to do is I want to make it touch the floor. So usually if I just bring it down and I just kind of wait, you'll see that uh, like a little note comes up. This one, it says constrained on line intersect plane. So that just basically I actually don't really know what that means but to me that means is that it's um, it's touching uh, the plane at which I'm trying to put this tree so I'm just gonna click and then just let go of everything and as you see now the tree is actually on the ground and I can zoom back out use the rotate tool by default I usually have the rotate tool on and then I can hold shift again remember you shift to move your uh, to pan around okay something like, okay cool that's a pretty nice place now what happens if you import uh, this tree and it's like on the building or something right so I'm just gonna throw this up on the building saying wait a second that tree shouldn't be there so what you want to do is just click somewhere on it and just bring it down to kind of close to where you do want it so I I'm gonna zoom out a little bit oh by the way so in the middle of a move tool the scale tool, uh, rotate tool. You can actually change your camera angle in the middle of it and not it not let it affect what you're doing. So right now I'm in the middle of the move tool, right? Because right now it's just moving around. What I want to do, what I want to do is I want to move this this camera angle. I don't like this camera angle, so I'm gonna hit the O button, which is get to orbit tool, move it around. I'm gonna zoom out, um, pan tool you know to move it around so that way I get a good camera angle I'm like okay I like this way now what I can do is hit M to get back to the move tool again and look it's in the middle of the move uh, the move function again so I want that to be up 
here. I'm going to click on it to place it. Just waiting for this um, the hourglass. Okay, use the orbit tool to double check. It's like, whoa, that tree is way up there. It's not where I want it to be, right? So again, what do I do here? I want to select a piece of this object, and then I'm just going to bring it down to the floor. And as you can see, it says on face in component. So that is a confirmation for me that it's actually touching somewhere, which is it's touching this the face of the ground. And then I'm going to click to place it. I'm going to zoom in. Okay, use the orbit tool, move it around, you know, go underneath the ground to make sure that it's not, you know, going through that ground or anything like that. So now that is exactly where I want it. So that is how you um, play around with this tree. Now, what if the tree is too small? Well, here's how you actually change the size of this tree. Now there's a couple of ways to do it. So I'm going to show you um, a couple of different ways. So that um, you can actually use the scale tool by hitting S or clicking on this toolbar here. You switch your mouse over it, you see it's scale. Okay, you can click on that and now your scale tool. So um, since this is a 2D model, you can all, you know you can stretch it up, left, you know, or diagonal. Um, sometimes you have a 3D model and there's actually uh, three of these. So for this particular one, since it's 2D, you can click the top to drag it up, right? Drag it up and that keeps the, the width of it kind of constrained, but you can actually change the height like this, okay? Let's say you don't, oh, and then on the bottom right, you'll see how, uh, what the scale is. So right now it's on 1.38, which is basically 38% bigger than the original. So if I want it twice as big, I'll just hit 2. You can actually type this okay, in the middle of the function. So I type 2 and then press enter. And now it's twice as big. Oh, I messed up. How do I go back? I can just undo it by going to edit, undo, or command Z to bring it back down. Okay. If I want to widen it, you just click on you know, uh, on that box, or you know, on the on the right, and you just click and drag it. Or no, well, not click and drag. Just click, and then just move it around, and then you'll just change the width of it, but the height will stay the same. So I want to cancel this operation. So I'm just gonna hit Escape. So it goes back to uh, default. Now, if you use the diagonal um, function of the scale then it's going to increase or decrease the size proportionally. Okay, so that means that the width and the height is proportional even though you're making the object bigger or smaller. Okay, so of course this scales it by, um, in, it's a relative scale, right? Because if you're making this bigger right now, it's 1.4, so that's 1.4 times bigger than the original model. But what if you want the height of this tree to be a particular size. Now, I don't know what the default size of a tree is, um, so I'm just gonna make up some numbers here, okay? You can actually use the tape tool to check the size of this tree, um, and that's how you can use the tape measure tool, which is the tape measure tool here, uh, which is uh, which is the T. You just hit T on your keyboard to select it as well. And then I'm gonna go here I'm going to click on the bottom and I'm going to drag it up and make sure it's on the blue axis. And you see the blue line there. That means is that it's constrained to the blue axis. And that'll give me more of an, an accurate uh, measurement. So this one, it says that it's about nine feet, nine feet. What is it? 10 inches, right? So about 10 feet tall. Well, I want this to be 15 feet. Well, how do I do that? So to resize this tree, you want to make sure you select it by using the select tool, clicking on it. And then you want to double click inside that component so that everything else is grayed out. That's actually very important that you do that or else you're going to resize the entire file, right? Entire file. That's not what you want to do. You only want to resize this tree. So you have to make sure that you are inside the component, inside the group um, before you proceed. 
So after you double click and you're inside, what you want to do is use the tape measure tool and on the left you'll see it, tape measure tool. You can click on that. The keyboard shortcut is T for tape, tape measure. You're going to go to the bottom of the trunk. You're going to click on it, okay? Click on the bottom of the trunk. And then you're going to go up. Make sure you're following the blue axis. So if you don't see the blue line, just move your mouse around until, you know, until it becomes blue and it's locked on. Hold the sh hold the shift button to make sure you're locked on to the blue axis. And then you're going to go to the top of the tree and then you're going to click okay now what you want to do is that you want to type out how big or how tall you want this tree to be so so far we established two points which is the beginning of the object and the end of the object now when we type down let's say 15 feet we're going to make that space that we just uh, marked we're going to make that space 15 feet okay so here's how we're gonna do that without pressing anything else after you, you use the tape measurement tool you're gonna type 15 or whatever desired uh, measurement that you want okay 15 feet so that's with the apostrophe and I press enter a window will pop up it should pop up if you if this doesn't pop up then you've done it wrong start over okay so when this window pops up and says, do you want to resize the active group or component? You click yes. And as you can see, this tree has now grown uh, and um, the rest of the document is still the same size. So I'm going to zoom out. You know, I'm going to use the orbit tool, you know, go around it. Okay. Now to get out of this, um, to get out of this context so that we can start working with the other files again you want to hit the escape uh, the escape key on your keyboard but make sure before you hit the escape key you make sure that the select tool is on first and then you hit the escape key that will allow you to get outside the context and voila we are finished Now let's say that you want three of these trees, right? How do you duplicate three of these trees? Well, when they're components, it's really cool because once you duplicate these components, um, it will actually still reduce the file size. So that's why it's really important that these are components. Remember how to check if they're components or not is that under this entity info box, you'll see components underneath it, right? After you select on the object, you'll see that it's component. But you see if I click on something else, well actually these are all components, but uh, if you click on this it says component. Um, if you don't see the window, go to window, make sure the entity info is uh, checked. Now if I want to copy this, I can use the copy and paste, same thing. Um, you know, I can copy this and then I can paste it. So control C or command uh, C and then paste it, which is control V or command V See, and now I can see a duplicate. And I can just put that wherever I want, right? That's one way to um, to duplicate. Another way to duplicate it, I'm going to delete that, um, is to use the move tool. So if I just click here, right, I'm going to click this, uh, this chestnut tree. And I'm going to move it. Well, you can actually move it to where you want it to be. So I'm just going to drag it somewhere. And then I'm going to hit the control key on my um, on my computer so on my Mac is control where's it control option no it's actually it's the option key or the alt key on the PC and then you'll see it'll instantly duplicate it you can actually let go of the alt key or the option key on the Mac and then you just click and boom now you just duplicated that plant okay so those are the two ways that uh, you can duplicate your trees. Now, the very last part of this tutorial is to label your plants. Um, it sometimes it can be very difficult to know what kind of tree this is, especially since this is a program. So I'm gonna show you how to label uh, these plants as well as turn it into a layer where you can show and hide these labels. So that's what the layers are for. 
so allow you to show and hide different components. So the way to do that is to go up to the tools. Yep, go up to tools and you'll see text. Okay. Also on the toolbar, you'll see it. It's um, this little icon here says A1. That's also the text box. And then what you want to do is you want to click on the object. So I'm going to click here. And then you can drag the line out to where you want the label to show up. See, if I put it up here, that's, it's just going to stay like that. I'll just move it over to the right just a little bit. Okay. So this is how I want the label to look like. So I'm going to click. And then I'm going to change the name of this to chestnut tree. Okay. Press. Well, I guess you can't really press enter. You just click outside of the text box and boom. Now you see it's a uh, chestnut tree. So um, let's say this tree is an apple tree. I'm just making that up right now. So I'm going to make sure the text tool is selected. I'm going to click on it and then bring it out. I'm going to call this the apple tree. Of course, it's just an example. It's not really the apple tree. Um, and then I'm going to click outside of it to confirm. And boom, now you see apple tree. Now what's cool is that if you click on the entire component and then you move it, right? So I'm going to click on the bottom of the tree trunk and I move it. That label actually follows you. Notice that the apple tree is actually, um, is, the label is actually stuck onto that particular component. That's actually really cool. Now if you have a bunch of different trees, these texts might get really annoying or they might get in the way. So in order to hide them, you have to create a layer for them. So the way to do that, okay, I'm just clicking out right now. I'm just clicking um, outside of, I'm, a, I'm actually going to click outside in dead space. That way I deselect everything. Now I just want to select these labels. So one second, my loading uh, cursor is on right now. So I just got to wait. All right. So when you click on it, you'll see that it is blue. Okay. It's highlighted. Next, can actually shift select another object. So that way now they're both selected. I can actually shift select again to deselect things. Okay. So I'm actually holding the shift button right now as I'm clicking on these things just to show you how these things really work. So you can actually click shift select different objects. Okay. This is how you can select multiple objects at the same time. Now for this particular example, I just want to select the labels. Now when I select on these labels, notice that the default layer right now is under domes. The reason why they're under domes right now is because the domes layer, if you look on the top right, and by the way, if you don't see layers, just go to windows and make sure that the layers option is checked. Now the layers will show up. So right now the default is domes, but I don't want it to be domes. What do I want it to be? I want it to be layers. There's two ways to do this. You can actually just click here and type down layers or, okay, or you can go up here and click on the plus button. You can create a layer. So I just click the plus. I'm going to call this labels. Okay. So labels, press enter, and then um, make sure that the labels are selected. And then under this drop down menu, I'm going to click on it and I'm going to choose labels. So now you see that these two uh, texts are labels. So how do I hide them? You just uncheck this box, which is under the column visible. Uncheck. As you can see, the labels disappear. Check again, appear. Okay, just to show you. So that concludes our tutorial on how to import SketchUp objects into your SketchUp documents. Thank you guys for watching this tutorial. I hope you find it very helpful. And again, if you want to use our plants um, at all, you can just go to our website. Again, that's at onecommunityglobal.org forward slash SketchUp dash plants. Um, or if you're interested in our project of One Community Global to create a new way of living, then you can just go to our main website at onecommunityglobal.org and to check us out. This is Jin Hua, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.